Hello everybody, this is Edward, and that is an iron golem, oh, and a villager on top of some roofs, actually, well, that villager there is on top of a, uh, on top of the church, which I need to fix the interior of one day, anyway, let's go have a look, oh, there's a bit of a party going on here, hello there, what, oh, you're just a regular villager, are you, okay, well, I need to figure out a way to get you down from here, anyway, how is everybody doing? I hope you're having an absolutely wonderful day, and if not, let's make it a wonderful day. And I'm gonna see, and I did, I was gonna see if I could jump that. You know what, I think I might play superhero for a bit and jump across the roofs and keep going until I oh, run out of roofs uh, to jump on, but that's okay. Nothing lasts forever, and it gives me a chance to look over the village as well. So, my oh my. I'm thinking the best way I'm going to get that villager down is with a bucket of water. But until then, um, I'm not too sure if I want to do it this episode, but there's a few things I want to do in this episode. I'm not too sure what I'm going to do first, though. So I'll just see, just see where, where... Actually, I wanted to see how my farm was going and if the bees were okay, because I think a few of them may have uh, disappeared. And it is a bit quiet out here, a little bit too quiet. So I'm just going to see... There's one particular place that they like to hang out, so I'm just going to see if they are there, just for the time being. Right, so, yes. The Well, it's good to see that the farm had been growing, but um, not much else has been happening around here in my Minecraft world, but the real world things have been going down with um, this, this uh, coronavirus and everything. But let's not worry about that right now. There was, they put, um, um, what's the word, limitations on what you can purchase at the shops at my, at, uh, I think it's around, I don't know if it's just, oh, there we go, there's some bees, there's a few bees around here, one, two, there's three bees, three bees beside the river, come on guys, I've got to take you guys back home, so yes, and when I say, let's not worry about the coronavirus, I just want... I don't mean, of course, it's a very serious thing that we need to be looking into and being, or well, taking a lot of precautionary actions to make sure that we look after ourselves and everybody around us. But for the time that we're here, I, would, I, want, you to, I want you to let go of all your stress, all your anxiety, all your worries, and just join me. Join me as I play Minecraft. So, oh, got stuck on a block. <laughs> that will happen in Minecraft. But, um... One thing that's happened, yes, there's been a limitation on what we can buy at the shops or how many of a certain item we can buy at our shops. And um, this is something I've noticed all around, all, all the shops I've visited. And uh, mind out, cow, I don't have any weeds, only the flower, and only the bees want the flower. Oh, that's not true. A cow might like a flower, I don't know. But um, I've been uh, having this unfortunate incident where, well, I've been looking into healthy alternatives to cow, cow's milk. Um, I'm trying to find out if there are better milk drinks that we can buy and drink that are, that will have more goodness in it, I think is the word I'm trying to think of. Um, it's, it's, there is certainly a large range of milks out there, and apparently one uh, website I was reading, hemp milk, is one of the best you can drink, but... Whether or not that's true, I'm not too sure. But other good milks included almond milk and um, oat milk. And uh, you know what? We've been drinking a lot of unsweetened oat milk, and we like that a lot. So I might be, if there wasn't such limitations, I think I'd, because you can only get them in one litre containers. So I'd like to buy bigger ones, but unfortunately, you can, you can only get so much milk to last us. So you can only buy two milk products. So um, I have to get a big cow's milk, three litre cow's milk to get us through the week, but also the oat milk so we can enjoy. And let's see if we can make some more baby bees now. Let's see. And where are the other bees? There's one there. And, oh dear, it's gotten a bit confusing now. I don't know which bees are which. Um, okay, well, I think I might have just come back when, uh, when things have settled down here. All the chaos of the bees. You know what? I need to Yes, the bees seem... Well, the bees have returned home. That was my main mission. So let's grab this wheat and uh, replant these fields. So yes, I've been drinking a lot of oat milk and um, 
Well, almond milk is meant, to, is meant to be very good for you too, but the problem was, I kept buying, accidentally I might add, unsweetened almond milk. And while unsweetened oat milk I find incredibly delicious, unsweetened, unsweetened almond milk I don't find nearly as nice. So, um, first time I bought it, I kind of said to myself, I'm not going to be doing that again. And then, uh, he says as he breaks the lily pad, I don't want to do that again either. Um, and sure enough, I went to the shops and I was like, ah, oh, there we go, almond milk. And I was looking everywhere for it, for the um, label that said unsweetened. And I looked everywhere except for the very top where it was unsweetened. It was my own fault, wasn't it? But I ended up, I, I drank it. I, I just mixed it in with some um, oat milk or regular cow's milk. And I was able to drink it so it didn't go to waste. Didn't want to waste anything, that's for certain. Especially in this time right now where where shopping can be a little bit difficult and getting what you want can be a little bit difficult anyway let's move on from that right now let's move on from the stresses of the world and just have a look on let's look within ourselves okay because right now a good way of getting through a lot of this um self-quarantining and uh well really watching the whole world shut down in such a way it's um you need to be able to I guess be at one with yourself, find that inner peace, and uh, cliche warnings, I'm sure I'm going to say a lot of cliche things in the in the upcoming videos, so don't hate me, I know that you've probably heard it everywhere from popular culture to that one teacher that you had in, at university or school, but I mean, when it comes to inner peace, it's all about accepting yourself, and that's probably the biggest cliche I'm going to say today, and... Uh, this is the thing, accepting yourself, it's not a case of thinking that you're going to become this absolutely brilliant person that wears white flowing gowns and you're doing yoga at five o'clock in the morning in the, sun, uh, in the sunrise while you eat nothing but organic yogurt and vegetables. No, it's nothing like that at all. People who live like that, if that's what makes them happy, more power to them. But if that's not who you are, that's not who you are. There's no point forcing yourself to become something you're not. It's just, it's working against who you are and it will ultimately make you extraordinarily unhappy. We don't want that. Accepting yourself is about saying, yes, this is me. I have some good points, I have some bad points, I'm good at these things, and I am not good at these things. And it could be a mixture of things. I mean, some people have great work ethics, but terrible social ethics, you know? It's just like, you, if you work a 60-hour week, but then you use all your friends, I mean, just because you're a hard worker, it doesn't mean that you're... You know what, I'm not going to use any terms like good and bad right here. It just means that maybe you might need to look at how you treat other people in that sense. But I'm, I'm digressing here. And really, I shouldn't have said things like that because that's, that's being very judgmental of myself. And that's one thing I want to try and not be. That is for certain because there's a great saying and talk about cliches right about now it's saying that it does the world does take all sorts there's a whole bunch of beautiful and strange things out there that i will never understand but they make people happy here we go i'm oh, getting a bit dizzy now i was trying to do two in a row technique of wheat this wheat breaking but um that was making me feel a bit dizzy looking doing that looking at myself doing that um but let's see where was i um I mean, it's true. No one is perfect. And I got my—I got I accidentally broke another lily pad. But yeah, see, that just goes to show. No one is perfect. I'm certainly not perfect. The Dalai Lama certainly isn't perfect. No one is perfect. Oh, and the sun's going down, so I'm going to have to try and get these seeds planted. I don't even think I need all this wheat, but um, oh dear, and this chicken seems very happy to follow me right now. But it's true. The thing about perfect. There we go. The thing about perfection is that it is a complete misconception, it's a complete lie, and oh, this chicken's still following me, I, thought he, I just gave it some seeds, I thought that would be enough, but this chicken seems really happy to want to be friends with me, but um, we all have darkness inside us, we all have things that we would rather not have in our lives, and it's just the sad truth of the world, it's the way we are, 
And this is the thing. By no means I'm saying you should change who you are. But if there's something out there, or if there's something within you that you don't like, and I'm just going to say a hypothetical here, say that you're a smoker, because smoking is something that I would say the world would say, oh, yes, smoking is bad, you shouldn't smoke, it's not good for your health, and it's a waste of money, yada, yada, yada. You could list any number of reasons. But until that reason within you is, I don't want to smoke anymore, there's, then there's no point forcing yourself to do something you don't want. Now, um, let's see... <sighs> I mean, to be honest with you, smoking is one of those things that's happening less and less. And um, oh, the moon is up and the sun is down, so I better finish this off here. But just because you smoke doesn't mean you're a bad person. But if you want to, say, stop smoking because you've had enough of it and you want to improve your health, then by all means, that is something you can change. And that's something you certainly have the power to change. And there should be nothing to stop you from becoming the person that you want to be. That is for certain. So... Um, the main thing I find is recognizing what is something you can change if you want to change it. And if you can change it and you have the motivation to, then go for it. The issue is when you start to look at things that you can't change. And I'm going to use an example for me here because I've never smoked. So that probably wasn't a good example because I can't relate to that. But something like... um. I've always had an issue with my height. Uh, I'm only five foot something, five foot eight, five foot seven, I don't know. I'm not extraordinarily tall. And there has been studies that I've read that say that men who are taller are more likely to get promotions, are more likely to have more relationships or um, a whole bunch of things. And whether or not that's true or just pseudoscience or pseudo-research, I don't know. But it's reading stuff like that can be very disheartening. Oh my goodness me, look at all the iron columns here. I wonder if a, a zombie popped up the, um, the zombie shoot here and they were all decided to hang around. But anyway, but then, well, because of that, because of this issue of, of not being tall, I was very upset because everyone else in my family is tall. And as a kid, as I was a very young child, the one thing I wanted to be was tall. I would lay down on the couch and uh, during the day and stretch myself out in an effort to make myself taller. I mean, you know, in a child's infinite wisdom, that's how things work, but really it isn't, as we all know. And, um, yeah, uh, of course, I didn't grow tall because of that. And um, all the other men in my family were over six foot, and I, for some weird reason, never was. And uh, it was very disheartening. But I had to learn that this is a part of my life that I could not change. It was who I am. I had to accept that. And at the moment, I could learn to accept it. And it's not a change overnight thing. It's not like an on and off switch. These feelings, these thoughts, these concerns all kept coming back. And hello there, little little villager child. And they kept coming back. And every time they resurfaced, I learnt. I mean, I might be, I guess, obsessing over the thought, the thought for maybe an hour or more. I don't know. While I was doing other things like cleaning the house. And I just... Every time I, start, I, I came to the realisation that I shouldn't be thinking these thoughts, that it was not doing me any good, I just learnt to accept it, be present and let go. And being present in the moment I find is very helpful, but it's one of those things that is so easy but yet so difficult because the moment you begin to go into your own mind, which is what I'm, <laughs> I'm notorious at doing, it's the moment you stop being present and you start looking in at yourself and you're not living in the moment so the moment i find myself not being present i remind myself what am i doing what's happening here um i'm vacuuming the house okay well then focus on vacuuming the house and let go of these thoughts that aren't doing you any good okay and when i do that it really does help i find another thing i find is to imagine that i'm a drop of water and this is, again, using my imagination, but in this case, you know, obsessing, not obsessing, but just going through a thought process that makes me feel a bit better. It allows me to kind of center myself, which is thinking I'm a drop of water in a creek, just kind of flowing down this, this creek. And I imagine the water, 
whenever it comes up to a situation in life that something like um i don't want to say bad but a complication in life something that didn't exactly go to plan what i'll do is i'll um imagine that i'm a drop of water and every complication is a rock i mean look at this complication right here for some reason okay the grass grew back but for some reason i and I'll show you, where's my uh, shovel? I'm unable to um, turn that into a pathway because of the, uh, the little signs I put on the, um, on the tomb tombstones. But anyway, that's okay. I'm sure I'll find a way, a different way of fixing that up. Um, but yeah, I'm, every complication is a stone or a rock in this creek of mine. And I'm just a drop of water that's going with the flow. And whenever I come across a situation... I don't grind myself against the rock. The way I see it is, I flow around it. I find a way to go around the problem, to resolve the problem, and then move on. I don't get stuck on the rock. I mean, that's just one way. There's millions of metaphors and things like that you can think of, any number. But for me, just a creek is nice because creeks are lovely things because they're so calm and they are good because they help the flow of water. They help um, feed the plants. They feed the, it uh, helps because um, it gives the animals somewhere to drink. It gives a place for the little fish and other aquatic creatures to live. So for me, a creek is a lovely place. But it's all, yeah, getting back to what I was talking about before. It's all about bettering yourself. And if you can't change it, accept it and let go. Like I had to let go of my height. And I will admit, sometimes people aren't ready to let go of certain things. I wasn't ready to let go of my height issues, among other things, for years. I had, I had this chip on my shoulder, and then it came to a point where I said to myself, the only person I am hurting here is myself. I need to let go of this and move on and enjoy the life I have before it is gone, because life goes so quickly. It really does. And um, that's what led me to get a job in a in a field that I wanted to do where I could wake up and be happy and enjoy the job I do. And um, instead of doing a job that I knew I could do but wasn't happy or wasn't reaching my full potential. But again, that was my own self journey. I had to be ready in my mind to move on. And not everyone is. And when you're ready, you'll know. And if you don't know, well then don't stress, don't fuss. If you really need to, talk to someone about it and hopefully they can help you get an outside perspective because a lot of things that go on, it's within our own minds and when we don't have an outside pers perspective, it makes things very black and white, very simple um, in a sense that this is what I want, this is what I don't want and this is what I'm confused about and really i guess it's not that easy nothing is black and white but again talk about cliches goodness me that is probably one of the biggest cliches i could say today but um yeah find find if you if you find yourself wanting to change an aspect of your life and you can you certainly can work towards it i know for one i've been putting on a bit of weight recently I've put on a, a lot of weight, actually, and I could be upset by it. I could be depressed um, that I've got, gotten a bit bigger. But if I really am unhappy with it, I can make the choice to become a healthier, thinner person. So I've started to exercise. I did jogging three days ago, and then I've been working in between that time. So otherwise, I would have been jogging a lot more. And uh, goodness me, yes, uh, everyone else has been stuck in quarantine. I don't exactly have that luxury. I have to look after people, so which I'm very thankful for. And I understand the responsibility of my job, and I have to be very careful with the coronavirus. But anyway, moving. <laughs> let's not get sidetracked here. Um, yeah, I went for a jog the other uh, couple of days ago, and my thighs still hurt. Um, not much. I, I've never really had it ingrained in me, um, the, the value of exercise and looking after oneself in that way uh, my mum used to exercise but my dad was never one for exercise and he was always a bigger gentleman had a bit of a tummy and that's who he was um and i just guess i never really i never really thought about exercise as a serious thing it was just something that you know healthy people healthy fan health fanatics do and um that's it 
and I didn't really worry about it, to be honest with you. But now that I'm getting older and I'm learning how important it is to exercise, I find that I am doing it more, which is a good thing. Because I'm eating right and exercising are two very good things that the body needs. Um, whether or not the body enjoys it, well, <laughs> I'm sure the body enjoys it, but my mind certainly doesn't. <laughs> but that's okay. To be honest with you, again, it's about... I mean, in moments like that, I know I can't change the idea of trying to enjoy jogging. I know some people get a real high, a real kick from going for a jog. But for me, I don't think I ever will. Because um, I just feel hot and bothered and uncomfortable and all the, my clothing's either too tight or too loose but then what I do is I look at the situation I'm in and I let go and I focus on the present I'll look at something say I'll enjoy the beauty of nature or the architecture of some housing that I'm running past the great thing I enjoy are clouds but well, I don't want to be running out there with my looking up at the sky with my head in the clouds because I might have an accident but um Again, it's about practicing, 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 uh, I guess, a healthy presence as well. Because it can go the other way if you've been too kind of mindful. Actually, I'm just trying to think, where am I going with this? Um, sometimes it's good just to let your mind daydream in a way. But nice daydreaming, not bad daydreaming. I mean, you can have your feet on the ground, but sometimes it's just nice to uh, just to dream for a while right now i'm dreaming of having a shovel that doesn't break <laughs> oh dear now one thing i wanted to have a look here oh goodness me yes okay the top bar at the back is meant to be like that and um i think i put it down one i don't know why that iron golem's in the sheep paddock but obviously he likes the sheep so oh, the situation he's in it makes me think he likes the sheep he might not like sheep i don't know and as you can see there, all these houses are exactly the same with the windows all lined up. But I'm having a look here, and all the top, all the back bars supports are up high. And I think that's how they're supposed to be. And these last three, as you can see, I didn't do it the same. So I need to put them up there and not have them down there. So I can fix that. It's not too difficult to fix. Thanks, heaven. Thank heavens. Oh, boy. Well, you know what? I built a house, and um, I rescued some bees, and I, I did some um, farming as well, which is good. So it's been a very busy day today in the Minecraft world. I'm just going to have a look up here, see how my... This is, I think, the tallest part that I can access in my village, the church tower here. I'm just going to have a look down at my village. There's the new... There's the farm there, and um, I might move those paddocks somewhere else. But, um, yeah, that's the farm over there, and this is over... So the, the village over that way, which has got all the housing and uh, whatnot. And yeah, it's becoming a nice little village. I'm not too sure. I want to build some more workplaces, but um, all in due time. I think I might call it good for today. Well, thank you for joining me, everybody. Take care. Live long. Live well. Look after yourselves and each other. And remember to take every day as a blessing. Oh, there's a little cat down there. And goodbye.